good morning and welcome to worship on this Palm Sunday. I'm Pastor Heidi Heimgartner with Pastor Mike Valerius in the sanctuary of First Lutheran Church of Blooming Prairie. And we greet all of our friends who are worshiping with us this morning. We encourage you to light a candle, gather your worship materials, which are available on our website and your family members, and be ready to share the peace of Christ both online and with those around you a little bit later. Today's radio broadcast is given in thankfulness to God for all members of First Lutheran Church in this longest year. You are appreciated and prayed for. Today is our Sunday School Family Egg Hunt. It will be done by incremental pre-registration and it begins soon after worship. Students, we can't wait to see you and we thank Ms. Melissa and our Ed Board for this annual opportunity. She just told me this morning there are a couple of spots left to reserve. Uh, there's a Facebook event with a link right on our Facebook page. Sign up is required. So if you would like to come, please check that out and then take care of business and then we hope to see you soon. Info about our soup suppers at home with Youth Mission Project, which concludes this week and a bonus recipe for Holy Week which is hamburger vegetable soup, submitted by Ruth Earl, are also available on our website and our Facebook page this morning. Holy Week worship includes a Monday Thursday Zoom home communion, along with a brief radio devotion and our communion milestone for grade five. That will be a busy evening. We will have a noon Good Friday service that is brief on Facebook Live and then limited indoor opportunities next Saturday and Sunday. So I ask all members and friends to please read your mailings and bulletins very carefully. We know there is a lot to learn and digest. As mentioned with the egg hunt, pre-registration is required for any in-person worship next Saturday and Sunday. Our reservation system opens tomorrow and the details for all of that are right on our website for SlutheranBP.com. If you have questions or do not have access to the website, our office is open each weekday this week from 8 a.m. to noon. And then I would like you to know that however you worship this hybrid time, whether you're online, on the radio, or in person, you are valued. You are a treasured part of our community. There is no confirmation this week. And Bible study, please watch for emails about our plans over the next couple of weeks. In our prayers this morning, we remember those who are grieving losses in their families, as well as those celebrating and those who are facing serious needs, such as making medical decisions, quarantining for illness, and more. That list includes Tim Wasik, as well as many others, and each prayer, whether it be named or unnamed, a joy or a concern, has a ribbon tied to our prayer cross. We wish to give special happy birthday greetings to Betty Ingwilson, our organist, who celebrated 85 years of God's grace yesterday. Pastor Mike is clapping, yes. Betty's fingers are as busy as ever. In fact, she will be in the sanctuary in a couple of days, faithfully recording new music for worship along with the rest of our worship and music committee. What a blessing she is for all of us. Furthermore, a little bird told me that Pastor Dick and Norma celebrated their 45th wedding anniversary this past week as well. Congratulations and blessings to you too. And today, lots of birds around here. Today, another bird told me it's Gary Thorson's birthday. So happy birthday. Blessings to you, Gary. Noisy offerings for Good Earth Village camperships are still being taken. And if you are stopping in this week, students, you can bring that with you and adults, Youth group members, don't forget your soup supper at home offering, which is our 40 together Lenten offering, as well as the offering for our youth summer events. Thank you. If you are listening from far away or are new to our broadcast, we especially love to hear from you. So leave a note or drop us an email or a postcard. We can get acquainted. We can answer inquiries about participation in our mission. And in addition, we thank all of our listeners for your generosity and giving, whether it be online, by Dropbox, or by mail. So again, to follow along, to find all of the information I just mentioned, our digital bulletin and lots more is at firstlutheranbp.com. Today's musicians are all pre-recorded and we thank each of them for their service to God. Our preacher today is Pastor Mike Valerius and our assisting minister is me, Pastor Heidi Heimgartner. Our sound and video is done this morning by Judy Richard, Brian Hovland, and Paul Heimgartner. And now at this time, I invite you to take a moment for a brief silence. Then please join in singing our gathering hymn, All Glory, Laud, and Honor, Palm Sunday.
The hymn is number 334. We will be singing the first three verses. Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also, and also with you. you. <clears throat> Let us pray. Everlasting God, in your endless love for the human race, you sent our Lord Jesus Christ to take on our nature and to suffer death on the cross. In, in your mercy, mercy, enable us to share in his obedience to your will and in the, the glorious victory of his resurrection. resurrection who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our special music this morning is titled, On That Day When He Rode Into Jerusalem. It is sung by our senior choir.
first reading for today comes from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 50. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher, that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear and I was not rebellious, I did not Turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me. Therefore, I have not been disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like flint. And I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me. Who will declare me guilty? Here ends our first reading. Our psalm for this morning is selected verses from Psalm 31. I invite you to read responsively with me. Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I am in trouble. My eye is consumed with sorrow and also my throat and my belly. For my My life life is wasted with with grief, and and my my ears with sighing. My strength fails me because of affliction, and my bones are consumed. I am the scorn of my enemies, a disgrace to my neighbors, a dismay to my acquaintances. When they see me in the street, they avoid me. Like Like the the dead, dead, I am forgotten, forgotten, out of mind, I am as useless as a broken pot. For I have heard the whispering of the crowd. Fear is all around. They put their heads together against me. They plot to take my life. But as for me, I have trusted in you, O Lord. I have said, you are my God. My times are in your hand. Rescue me from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me. Let Let your your face face shine shine upon your servant. Save Save me in your steadfast love. Our second reading from Paul's letter to the Philippians, chapter 2. He writes, Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. Here ends our second reading. Thank you, Pastor Heidi. It's time for our children's sermon. And so I'd love to visit with all the boys and girls and all the adults too who are listening or watching on Facebook. So I have this in my hand. And I wonder if you can see it on Facebook and at home. I'll tell you what it is in just a moment. It's big and leafy and green. Yeah. And we wave it. It's a palm, right? It's a palm branch. This is, we, it's Palm Sunday today. So we use this to represent what sort of happened to Jesus. It's a way to celebrate. And the people around Jesus used this as a way to um, celebrate and show their approval and their love of Jesus. It's a weird way, I think, to show that you're honoring someone. We wouldn't do that, right? They were honoring Jesus as Lord and King, as Savior. But I don't know if they knew exactly what they were doing. I mean, they they were honoring him, but they really didn't know the full honor that Jesus um, gets or needed. So these people were excited. And they started waving this. It's kind of like if you made a banner um, that said, we love you, Jesus, right? And had all your names on it. Or if you dressed up with your your shirt that said, I love Jesus. Um, This is the way. 
Or your Homer hanky, good one, Pastor Heidi, waving your Homer hanky. I was going to say, circle me, Bert. Um, but as a way to show that you're excited and that you're part of that team and that you want to honor this person. They thought of him as like this king, this, say, this, this person who was going to come and change everything for them. But it was only for one day. And then everything changed for Jesus. And so today is Palm Sunday, and we wave our branches, and we yell hallelujah, and we sing those words. But we know that it's only for a day, because in Jesus' life, things are going to change. We're moving into Holy Week now, and we're going to have Monday, Thursday. That's when we remember the Last Supper, and when Jesus washed his disciples' feet. And then we're going to have Good Friday, where Jesus is arrested. He's no longer a king. The palm branches are gone, right? But we know that on Easter, we'll wave more than just palm branches to celebrate because he truly is our Savior and King. So today, on Palm Sunday, we celebrate. Even if it's just one day, Jesus as our King. So let us pray, boys and girls. And if you're coming here today for our um, egg hunt, we have palm branches here. And if you would like to take one home with you, we want you to. We bought a whole bunch like we always do, so everyone can have a palm branch if they'd like. So let us pray. Holy Jesus, on this Palm Sunday, we honor you as King and Lord and Savior. And we know that this was the beginning of the journey for our souls, the journey for freedom for everyone. Help us not just celebrate today, but always that you are our Lord God. Um, we love you, Jesus, and we thank you. In your name we pray, God. Amen. Well, thank you, everyone. We will now sing our gospel acclamation before we sing, before we read our gospel. For today comes from St. Mark chapter 11, verses 1 through 11. Lord, Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethpage and Bethany, near the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, Why are you doing this? Just say this, the Lord needs it, and we'll send it back here immediately. Then they went away and found a colt tied near a door, outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, What are you doing untying the colt? They said, they said to them what Jesus had said, and they allowed them to take it. Then the two disciples brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and other people spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord! Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David! 
Hosanna in the highest heaven. Then Jesus entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, you, O Christ. Christ. So a few years ago, the devotional guide, Our Daily Bread, carried a story of a pastor who was tra a traveling evangelist who rode a donkey as he traveled from village to village in Brazil, preaching the gospel. One day, the evangelist fell asleep in the saddle as he made his return home after a tiring day. A couple hours later, he was rudely awakened by the roughness of his ride. His donkey had left the trail and was walking through a rocky field. At first, the pastor was angry, but he calmed down when he saw that they were almost back to his village. When he arrived at his church, the pastor learned that his friends had gathered to pray for his safety. A rancher who was opposed to the Christian faith had sent some men to attack the evangelist at the bend on the trail. They thanked God for causing the donkey to take a shortcut home. So I would like to ask you, was that God's plan? Did God cause the donkey to take a shortcut to save this pastor? Or is that just how things worked out? I'll let you decide that. So have you ever wondered that in your life? Have you ever wondered, was this God's plan? God lined these things up just right for me or just right for our world? Or was it coincidence? Did it just happen that way? Or maybe have you wondered, is there a plan at all? Is it all just random acts that sort of happen, happenstance? Have you ever wondered any of those things? I know I have. Well, Jesus sent two of his disciples into this village to bring a donkey to him. And he told them, if anyone asks, tell them this is what the teacher says. Explain it to him, that we're going to use it, we'll bring it right back, don't worry about it. He gave them detailed instructions of where the donkey would be, how you would find things, and even that people might ask, why are you doing this? And it happened just the way Jesus explained it. I wonder what the, the, the disciples had to realize, someone is in control here, because he knew it, he saw it, what was going to happen. But when they brought the colt back to him, two of the disciples laid their cloak on it. Maybe just to keep it clean so Jesus could sit and not get his garments dirty. But then others started laying their cloaks on the road and cutting palm branches, laying them out and shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. They treated Jesus as a king, like someone of great importance. But it doesn't say why in the reading. It doesn't explain to us why this sudden shift. I mean, he'd been walking with them for three and a half years. He'd been teaching them. He'd been telling them not to tell anyone. The time isn't here. Not yet. Don't tell anyone this miracle that just happened. Right? He said it over and over. And Jesus had been to Jerusalem before. This wasn't his first entry into Jerusalem. Did he want this fanfare? Was this his plan? Did this happen just by chance? Or was this all part of the plan? What's interesting, I think, is I think the crowd thought they were getting a new king. Right? Someone who would stand up to the emperor. Someone who would stand up to Herod and to Caesar. Give them their own leader like everyone else had. They were getting their king. Someone that was going to take care of the followers of Jesus. So they were shouting and yelling and following him and treating him like royalty. This was going to be the beginning of a new era for the followers of Jesus. All those that oppressed them, that system that didn't work for them, was going to get their comeuppance. But in reality, this was the beginning of the end at least of Jesus' earthly ministry. This was the end of him walking with his disciples. 
This was going to be the end of Jesus teaching large, large crowds. This was the end of Jesus healing sick and raising people from the dead, giving sight to the blind. By human standards, Jesus didn't beat the system. The system beat him. The system was going to kill him. He wasn't, he wasn't the king that the crowd was cheering for. We know later that it's much better than that, but they didn't know that. So now, many of you may know, I'm not much of a country music fan. I'm more of a rock guy, and I'm pretty proud of that. Um, but there is a country song that, as I was reading and thinking about this, that started to ring in my ears. My wife is a country fan. My daughter is a country fan. Um, my sister, I found out last night, is a country fan. But there's a song that Garth Brooks sings. And he's singing about a girl, because they're always singing about a girl. And the title of the song is Unanswered Prayers. Maybe you guys were assuming that was coming. The refrain in here is what was ringing in my ears as I was reading this. It says, sometimes I thank God for unanswered prayers. Remember when you're talking to the man upstairs, that just because he doesn't answer doesn't mean he doesn't care. And then he says this line, some of God's greatest gifts are unanswered prayers. Now, I don't know if I like the phrase unanswered prayers. I think all prayers are answered. But sometimes the answer is no, and so it can feel like it's unanswered. But sometimes those no's are the best thing that we can get. We don't get what we're praying for, and yet what happens is way better than what we were asking for. Have you ever had that? Has that ever happened in your life where you are sure this is what you need and want and hope for and it doesn't happen and it's really hard at the time? And then hindsight, looking back later, you say, thank God that it didn't work out that way. That's what Garth Brooks was singing about and I think that's the crowd celebrating Jesus as king is going to turn out to be way better than what they were ever expecting. See, God's plan and the crowd's plan are two different things. The people wanted a king. The people wanted to get what all those other people had on earth. They wanted to be treated like or better than um, the Romans or um, the surrounding people. They wanted a king, but they got a savior. And that's a huge distinction. Right? And eventually, or now, the disciples... We're going to be part of this, pro this, this plan. <clears throat> Excuse me. The crowd is going to be part of the plan. The cult, unassuming baby donkey, was going to be part of the plan. Eventually, Herod and Judas, Mary, Mary Magdalene, they're all going to participate in God's plan. Some people, even who are opposing this, are still going to be part of God's plan. See, and God's plan is still being worked out today in your lives and in my life. So I wonder, where do we fit? Where do you fit in God's plan? How is God working out his plan with you? I mean, there's so much going on in our world today, like always. We can miss God. We can miss God's plan. We can miss that God is working out details. And with all the violence that we're hearing about, there's been two shootings again in the last two weeks, and I think there was another one Friday night. People dealing with COVID, whether it's illness, or whether it's getting vaccinated, or whether it's frustration, sick of being isolated, sick of talking about COVID. There's children in desperate need at our border. And we don't know if, how to react to that. We don't know what to do with that. How is all of this part of God's plan? And how is it being worked out? And where are you in God's plan? I wish I could stand here and give you all the answers. But what I can tell you is God is working out the details. God is working all of this out for God's glory. He is our king but he is our savior. And so as you move into Holy Week, as we begin this Holy Week 
with all of those Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, Holy Easter, I mean, Holy Saturday and Easter Sunday, know that God is working God's plan out for you and for me, just like he was with these disciples. So let us pray. Holy God, we put our trust in you and your plan for the world, even if at times we don't fully understand it. Help us as we move into Holy Week and bless us as we celebrate Easter and the resurrection and your plan for our world. Amen. We'll now sing our hymn of the day and we will tie our prayers for this week onto our prayer cross. continues with the Apostles' Creed. It's on page 127. If you have a worship book at home, you may recite it from memory, or you may look in your bulletin as we join together. Let us confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was, was crucified, crucified, died, and was buried. He, he descended to the dead. dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now, relying on the promises of God, we pray humbly for the church, for the world, and for all people in need. Righteous Savior, in Jesus, you came among us as a suffering servant. Give your church humility and redeem us from pride. Console those who are tortured. Defend the falsely accused. Heal our fractured world. From Myanmar to Boulder, Atlanta to Virginia Beach. 
and empower us to confess Christ crucified. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Righteous Savior, in creation, life springs from death. Create newness in areas affected by climate change and grant relief from natural disasters for our neighbors to the south. Nurture new growth for fields and farmers. Increase our appreciation in all the earth gives us each day. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Righteous Savior, as Jesus was handed over to the powers of this world, keep us mindful of all who are in the greatest of need. We pray this day for healing and support. For Richard, Reed, Karen, Dawn, Bruce, Ashley, Sue, Kay, Ed, Wayne, Jeffrey, Jerry, Darcy, Tim, Susie, and Jim. For those in the lonely days of quarantine, those who suffer from COVID, and those we name in the quiet of our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Righteous Savior, we praise you for the faith you have given to people of all places and times. We praise you for the faith you have given us in this past year. Continue to increase our faith to follow you. As we trust the promises of baptism, join you at the table of forgiveness and look for the resurrection of the dead. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of mercy, accompany our journey to your cross as we lift all of our prayers to you. In the name of Jesus, amen. Now may the peace of Christ be with you always. And also, also with you. you. I invite you to share a sign of Christ's peace with your neighbors, your friends, those around you, and online as our offering is now received. And as we sing together our offertory song titled, My Life is in You, Lord. <laughs> God, you walk beside us in desert places, and you meet us in our hunger with bread from heaven. Accompany us in this journey, that we may pass over from death to life with Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. I now invite you to pray with me the Lord's Prayer. Let us pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. A reading of the Passion story according to the Gospel of Mark. It was two days before the Passover and the festival of unleavened bread. The chief priests and the scribes were looking for a way to arrest Jesus by stealth and kill him, for they said, not during the festival, or there may be a riot among the people. 
While Jesus was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, he sat at the table. As he sat at the table, a woman came with an alabaster jar of very costly ointment of nard, and she broke open the jar and poured the ointment on his head. But some who were there said to one another in anger, why was the ointment wasted in this way? For the ointment could have been sold for more than 300 denarii and the money given to the poor. And they scolded her. But Jesus said, let her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has performed a good service for me, for you always have the poor with you. And you can show kindness to them whenever you wish. But you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anointed my body beforehand for its burial. Truly, I tell you, wherever the good news is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will be told in remembrance of her. Then Judas Iscariot, who was one of the twelve, went to the chief priests in order to betray Jesus to them. When they heard it, they were greatly pleased and promised to give him money. So Judas began to look for an opportunity to betray Jesus. On the first day of unleavened bread, when the Passover lamb is sacrificed, his disciples said to Jesus, where do you want us to go and make the preparations for you to eat the Passover? So he sent two of his disciples saying to them, go into the city and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him and wherever he enters, say to the owner of the house, the teacher asks, where is my guest room? that I may eat the Passover with my disciples. He will show you a large room upstairs, furnished and ready. Make preparations for us there. So the disciples set out and went to the city and found everything as Jesus had told them. And they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, Jesus came with the twelve. And when he had taken their places and were eating, Jesus said, truly, I tell you, one of you will betray me the one who is eating with me. They began to be distressed and say to him one after another, surely not I. He said to them, it is one of the 12, one who is dipping bread into the bowl with me. For the son of man goes as it is written of him. But woe to that one by whom the son of man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one not to have been born. While they were eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread. And after blessing it, he broke it and gave it to them and said, Take, this is my body. Then he took a cup and after giving thanks, he gave it to them. And all of them drank from it. He said to them, This is the blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly, I tell you, I will never drink again of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God.
And now as you go, receive the blessing. Our Lord is on a journey, and the way leads through opposition and misunderstanding. Jesus, Jesus invites, invites us to, to follow, follow him. him. This journey leads through the night of Gethsemane and the shadow of betrayal. Jesus, Jesus invites, invites us to follow him. him. Our Lord is on a journey, and the way leads to condemnation. And to give you, oops, and suffering on a cross. Jesus, Jesus invites, invites us to, to follow him. him. May you be blessed with the grace to follow our Lord Jesus and to give him your lives. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. So go in peace, follow Jesus. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.